Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Clutch Chess International 2020 and this time I would like to show you another game from the grand final between Magnus Carlsen who's gonna play as white and Fabiano Caruana as black. So without further ado, this was just crazy game, a lot of double edge tactics, a lot of interesting combinations uh, and, and this is just so exciting to comment. So without further ado, let's jump onto the board. Uh, we have d4 by Magnus Carlsen on f6 and bishop f4 london system uh, set up by magnus carlsen he loves to play with the bishop on f4 uh, instead for example with the bishop on g5 we have d5 by caruana e3 c5 so uh, magnus doesn't go for his jobava system which he played against jeffrey shonk but rather knight on f3 more traditional approach we have knight on c6 and now knight b on d2 setting up this this pair of knights protecting each other and now knight h5 attacking this london bishop and what to do in this position as white magnus does completely nothing he goes for d takes on c5 uh, and after knight takes on f4 e takes on f4 is this pawn a weakness because this you know the pawns are doubled uh, or maybe it's a strength uh, Magnus has different opinion probably than, than Fabiano Caruana because now this pawn can be very very annoying. For example after e6 if black want to take the pawn on c5 then this pawn can go to f5 and it's very very unpleasant. So Fabiano goes for the pawn on c5 with the queen. We have queen on a5. It cost him a couple of moves. Magnus play bishop on d3 queen on c5 and now castle so magnus castle uh, developed the pieces and black are still undeveloped uh, we have if e6 now I'm, I'm showing you just if e6 then uh, f5 is not really pleasant yes black can take it but then the e file is open and um, the, the the queen can be under attack then the, the knight can join the, the attack on the king side so it's not in Fabiano's mind uh, and he played g6 putting some uh, control on f5 so now this this pawn can be stopped especially with e6 uh, and this position was rich a couple of times and the main move here was knight on e5 knight on e5 however magnus goes for knight on b3 with attack on the queen so queen have to be moved somewhere queen on d6 so as as you see this queen has to move you know a couple of times already we have queen on d2 defending the the pawn because the pawn was attacked and now bishop on g7 attacking pawn on b2 we have c3 blocking that move and now castle by caruana rook f on e1 and now bishop on g4 uh, threatening to take the knight okay and uh, white would have you know triple pawns uh, on the f file so definitely something have to be done knight f on d4 is possible to play and just exchange the, the knights and centralize this knight this is possible but magnus prefer queen on e3 uh, to put also some pressure on the on the semi open file uh, and also defending the the knight and now knight can jump to e5 and this can be very very unpleasant uh, because it's gonna be defended with this weakened pawn and uh, also you know uh, the knight if takes then then everything is great for white so fabiano caruana doesn't like it this idea like knight on e5 that is too much for him and he exchanged the knight we have bishop takes on f3 queen takes on f3 and now e6 and now saying okay now you go not gonna move this pawn because i control f5 and now your pawn gonna be a weakness and so you have to deal with that and magnus said okay but now i'm gonna attack your your king's indian setup and uh, and i play h4 uh caruana doesn't like the idea of marching the pawn on h5 so he play h5 and now we have g3 so creating this uh, this pawn structure looks very very solid uh, we have rook f on e8 rook a on d1 so developing the pieces a6 preparing b5 and now knight on d2 knight on d2 look at this move knight on d2 is a very very deep move because preparing uh remaneuvering the knight very very interesting way uh, and it actually plays against the move b5 
and it, and it, it seems like okay why what what is going on here any moves could be good here queen on e7 rook on a7 rook a on d8 all of these moves remaneuvering improving the position of the pieces would be good but caruana planned b5 and he actually missed another maneuver of magnus he wants to move this knight this way to g5 and in g5 this this knight is is really really active so can you imagine how he did that now he play knight on e4 knight on e4 the point is uh black cannot actually take the knight because they're gonna lose at least the pawn d takes on e4 bishop takes on e4 and now this knight is under attack twice and also the queen is under attack so uh, if queen on c7 then of course uh, losing the the exchange so not really the greatest idea so the only move is knight on d4 but it's still losing the pawn the pawn which was you know um, on the d file so now for example a rook on d4 still the queen is under attack so bishop on d4 bishop on a5 and now after retreating white has one extra pawn and uh, really comfortable game so really really nice idea you know remaneuvering the the knight knight on e4 we have queen on d7 and now knight on g5 as planned rook a on d8 so centralizing the rooks and now bishop on c2 uh, and here is the another problem uh, of Fabiano Caruana. Uh, what to play next? What to play next? What's the plan? So, for example, he could go for bishop on f6. It's not really intuitive move. Uh, white all the time have the have the g4 possibility attacking on the king side. So, for example, g4, h takes on g4, queen on g4. Uh, and now it's chance for black to exchange this dark square bishop yes it's defender uh, but as white doesn't have the dark square bishop uh, on its own so it's not as dangerous at, as it would be so bishop on g5 queen on g5 and let's say queen on e7 uh, and white can exchange or or not maybe try to attack but queen f6 and the position is rather equal uh, white can try to push and you know uh, maybe play something on the on the king side uh, but it's not easy you know to materialize this advantage and, and and win the game probably that would be just maybe sharp maybe very sharp game but for now it's just about to draw but fabiano caruana in this position didn't go for anything on the king side and he played uh, before the problem with this move uh, is Magnus immediately jumps with Bishop on a4 and now this knight is pinned and it's very very dangerous pin so uh, we have B takes on c3 B takes on c3 and here uh, I will just show you one thing here what what black could play what actually should play what is the only sensible move is rook on e7 immediately very important move rook on e7 uh, unpinning the rook and also in the next move uh, black could unpin the queen uh, and i will show you why but just in a while i hope I'm, I'm not gonna you know forget that but i will show you uh why this move is so important so uh what happened in the game is queen on c8 and pinning the queen first and the problem is uh white have now winning continuation so feel free to pause the video and try to find the best move for white while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready who oh, this move is a uh, really mind-blowing it's f5 f5 it's like caruana played g6 play e6 just to control uh to f5 and f5 was not possible and magnus plays f5 the best move in the position and now if e takes on f5 that is the problem because after rook on e8 rook on e8 uh queen on d5 and now the knight is under attack and also f7 is under attack and you cannot defend anything if you play rook on e7 of course you lose the knight uh if you play knight on d8 trying to defend then uh, bishop on e8 you lose the rook uh, and finally if you play knight on e5 trying to defend 
Uh, that makes the most sense, but still, bishop on e8, queen on e8, and now rook on e1, pinning this knight. Uh, bishop on f6, very important. Uh, it's it's one of the resources which doesn't work, but there is nothing better here. Uh, bishop on f6, f4 is coming anyway. Uh, and now the idea is that this knight could jump here on f3 and actually check the king and fork the rook okay the problem is there is a one defender of f3 so what black would have to do is bishop on g5 and everything would be fine uh if for example white takes this this way uh, but rook on e5 and here is the problem bishop on e7 and let's say c4 c5 and winning the game this way you know being the exchange up and having this pass pawn is of course winning uh, also, rook on f8 maybe could be also okay. Uh, for example, f takes on g6, f takes on g6, queen d3, and it's still a lot of pressure. Uh, it's still, you know, attacking the, the pawn on e6, uh, queen attacks on, on g6. Very difficult position for black. M maybe that would be the, the better idea. So Fabiano Caruana doesn't have much choice and play G takes on F5. And now a continuation of this is C4. C4, this is the move. Uh, if you try something like Queen on H5, uh, yes, it's playable, but after Rook on E7, you don't really have the great continuation. You would have to, you know, push the pawns and try to attack the position. So uh, C4 is much, much better. Uh, and what is this move? Uh, C4. Uh, the point is now, uh, if D takes on C4, of course, uh, winning the, the knight, that's, that's obvious, but also if Rook on E7, then after Bishop on C6, still Bishop on C6, Queen C6, C takes on D5, now Black cannot take it because the Rook is hanging, so Queen on E8, as Queen was under attack, D takes on E6, uh, and now F takes on E6, maybe defending H5, uh, but it doesn't really matter because rook on d8, deflection of the queen, queen was just, you know, um, overworked and now uh, queen h5 and everything just collapsed. Okay, this is the, the one threat, this is another threat and it's just, just unplayable. So, uh, after c4 we had another move, uh, we have knight on d4. And here is also the moment where I would like to show you why rook on e7, now you understand the position a bit more, why rook on e7 immediately also would probably save the game. Uh, because now after f5, which was played in the game, uh, it doesn't work the same way, because g takes on f5, c4, and now after knight on e5, attacking the queen, but also defending this queen, and queen is attacking the bishop, you see? Here is the, here is the difference, if queen is moved, there, is, there are no tricks here. So after rook on e5, uh, then queen can take on a4. Don't go for all of these ideas which were played in the game. So uh, this is this is the difference. But as I said, here we have knight on d4, very similar idea. But now uh, the queen is not here. The queen is not d7, so not attacking the bishop. So so here is the difference. Uh, we have rook on d4, so white can play this way. Uh, of course, if you try something like queen on h5, uh, you don't really have the possibility of continuing the attack. Rook on e7 and it stops everything. C takes on d5. Rook on d5 position position of black is uh, pretty, pretty awesome here. Uh, however, we have rook on d4, the best move in the position, and now uh, bishop on d4, bishop on e8, and now rook on e8. And only now queen h5. And now this is a very, very serious threat. Checkmating threat, what can be more serious? Uh, and now, for example, rook on e7, if the rook on e7 is played, then c takes on d5, uh, and let's say queen on c3, trying to be active, attacking the rook, and also attacking g3, as the pawn is pinned, so uh, two threats, uh, but Magnus would retreat with the, with the knight, knight on f3, blocking the queen, defending the rook, but also attacking the bishop, so that's the move. 
uh, bishop on a7, let's say, d takes on e6, and now if you take with the rook, you are in the huge troubles, you're gonna lose this, this bishop. Uh, so, for example, king g7, queen e7, winning the bishop and uh, and the game. And if f takes on e6, uh, then rook d1. And look at this. Uh, checkmate is coming, and you cannot do much about that. Queen on c7, you can defend and still, you know, put the threat, some threat. But queen g6, um, defending and also attacking. King f8, and now knight e5 can join the party. Uh, if rook on g7... Queen g6 uh, and just pick up the pawns and another pawn is is, is under attack. So uh, rook on e7 doesn't really work. So what Cap Fabiano Caruana uh, tried to exploit is queen on c7 and, and exploit this g3 pawn. And now this is a threat because the, the pawn is pinned. Uh, and what Magnus Carlsen did in this position? What would you play in this position? What do you think? Uh, what Magnus did, he didn't even care about this pawn on g3. Uh, he just played c takes on d5. And why? Because uh, if queen on h3, then he knows that Fabiano Caruana wins only the pawn and wastes the tempo because there is still a checkmate here. Okay, so he cannot exploit any, any anything here. He just win one pawn, can win another pawn, but gonna be checkmated. So king on h1, and what would happen? Queen c7 going back to defend. Uh, and after d takes on e6, uh, there is a threat of winning the rook. So uh, let's say king on f8, queen h6, and now if king tran try to run this way, king on e7, then e takes on f7 with check. You see already the idea, bishop on e5, but then queen e6 with check, king f8. If queen e8, then would be a checkmate on e8. So uh, king f8 and now queen e8, king g7, queen g8 is uh, checkmate. So uh, king g8, but it also doesn't work because simply e takes on f7 with check. Uh, and with this fork. Uh, it's still not the end because after queen on f7, this rook is still under attack and white have to choose uh, what to play next. Uh, and there are a couple of choices, of course, can uh, play the endings with the queen against the bishop and the rook or rook on e8, uh, queen on e8 and now queen h7, king f5, queen f5, win some material. And after king on g7, winning this bishop, uh, or if king goes to uh, g8, then also winning this bishop. So being up the two pawns and minor pieces, of course, are uh, enough to win the game. So uh, definitely after queen on h6, the only sensible move which black could play is bishop on g7. But this is also winning for white. Uh, and feel free to pause the video for the second time uh, and tell me why because it's very very nice tactic so so just enjoy that tactic while I enjoy my cup of tea so the move we are looking for is knight on h7 check and after uh, king on g8 knight on f6 with check uh, king on f8 and then queen g7 you see that already and after king on g7 winning back the material uh, king on e7 also doesn't work because e takes on f7 with check we've seen that already and if bishop on e5 this time queen f6 uh, king d7 and now just simply exchange the pieces and also end up with the uh, rook and the knight uh, and of course it's completely winning so really really beautiful tactics however uh, fabiano caruana didn't go for queen on g3 and play finally rook on e7 the problem is it's already too late now we have d takes on e6 uh, f6 we we already know what's gonna happen if the if the knight if the pawn takes so f6 uh, but now queen on g6, king on f8, rook on g7, of course, that would be a checkmate. So king on f8. Uh, and now knight f3, finally, uh, Magnus retreat with the, with the knight. 
defending g3 so the queen cannot take and also attacking the bishop we have bishop on c3 and now rook c1 pinning this bishop and now uh, if black want to unpin the bishop so for example queen on a5 it looks like pretty logical move the problem is knight on d4 and you cannot take the knight it looks like okay free knight but then uh, you're gonna get checkmated okay you 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 just have no chances here and if white tries maybe queen on a3 because there are a lot of tactics here okay this is uh, this is another threat here uh so queen on a3 attacking the rook looks like very very active mook defending the bishop and also uh keeping an eye on the rook it looks like very very solid move the problem is rook on c3 deflecting the the queen and after queen on c3 queen f6 uh king e8 of course is a checkmate so king on g8 winning this uh rook uh but it's enough of course to to win the game okay d7 is winning the game so uh fabiano caruana told okay this bishop it's not as important for now uh, as this pawn because pawn in e6 is just too many mating ideas here so we have rook on e6 but now knight on d4 anyway knight on d4 anyway and this time the knight cannot be taken because the queen is hanging not mate but queen and so it's enough of course to win the game also the rook is under attack so we have rook on b6 uh, but now queen h6 queen h6 with the idea of winning the tempo and attack the bishop which is still pinned so fabiano caruana had the choice do something with the pawn which could win the game or get out of the pin which didn't work so uh king on g8 and now simply queen on e3 uh winning this bishop uh fabiano tries i mean just play rook on c6 knight on c6 and in this position he resigned the game as he gonna be rook down and uh, of course in totally uh losing position what a game i really love this game i enjoy all of this uh combinations you know when i when i analyze that i hope you also enjoy if yes press like if for some reason you don't like them then just press unlike and if you don't want to miss the final games from today then press subscribe smash the bell button and thanks for watching and see you in the next one